Chapter 45. Sophie had no idea how much time passed before she forced her eyes open, ignoring the searing light. The warm feeling she'd fallen asleep to was gone, replaced with a heightened awareness of everything around her. Maybe it was from being bound and gagged for so long, or the way the drugs had limited her abilities, but everything felt like sensory overload. It wasn't quite as bad as waking up in the hospital the first time her telepathy started, but it was close. She grabbed her head and moaned, wishing she had the strength to shield the barrage of sound. They were in a city of some sort, a human one, based on the noise and the cigarette butts on the ground, in a deserted alley. The buildings looked like they belonged to a different century, and everything was stone, even the street. Dex stirred beside her, and she squirmed closer, needing to feel his warmth. As long as he was alive, everything would be okay. Dex, she whispered. His eyes fluttered and he moaned as the light hit him. Then he bolted upright, his face wild. Sophie? Their eyes locked and she held her breath, hoping he didn't hate her for getting him into this. He threw his arms around her, hugging so tight it knocked the breath out of her. I thought I'd never see you again. She buried her face in his shoulder. I'm so sorry, Dex. This is all my fault. They clung to each other for a moment before Dex pulled away, wiping his eyes. I'm just glad you're okay, and I'm sorry for the way I've been acting. Please, it doesn't matter. Let's focus on more important things, like staying alive. He nodded, surveying their surroundings. Where are we? Somewhere human, but I don't know where. Why would we be in the Forbidden Cities? Their hideout must be here. The guy who rescued us didn't leap, so it can't be far. She checked her arms and wrists for wounds, but the skin was smooth and fresh. No sign of the burn she'd felt during the interrogation. Her nexus was gone too. She wasn't surprised the kidnappers took it, but why didn't the rescuer give her one? How are they supposed to get home? Unless that was what he slipped into her hand before he left. What are you doing? Dex asked as she scoured the ground, searching for anything that looked remotely elven. He gave me something to help us and I can't find it. Dex helped her look, but all they found was a scroll of paper with the words, Alexander, Lantern, Concentrate, followed by the word, Hurry. Well, that's helpful, she crumpled the page ready to scream. Four vague disconnected words? That's all they were giving her? She felt her neck, desperately hoping her home crystal would still be there, but the kidnapper stole that too. Even her bottle of allergy medicine was gone. She had nothing left but the clothes on her back, and her stupid blue foxfire uniform was only going to make it harder for them to hide among humans. I don't understand, Dex said, interrupting her venomous thoughts. Why wouldn't he take us home? Why would he dump us here? Because this was his job and he didn't want anyone to know he was involved. She rose on shaky legs, the buildings spinning as the blood rushed to her head. That's how the black swan operates. The black swan? I'll explain as we walk. We should get moving, in case anyone's looking for us. They wound through narrow, deserted streets, and Sophie finally confessed everything she'd hidden from him. Her telepathy, Prentice, the notes, the black swan, Fintan, Everblaze, her upcoming tribunal. Dex seemed too stunned to process any of it, and she couldn't blame him. The more she thought about it, the more she was sure the Black Swan had nothing to do with her kidnapping. Their little puppet, he'd called her. Who else could he be talking about besides the Black Swan? Plus, the kidnappers didn't seem to know what was hidden in her mind, and the Black Swan would know that. They put it there. But if it wasn't the black swan, who was it? And why? Pounding noise interrupted her thoughts. Sophie stumbled back, clutching her temples. What's wrong? Dex asked, steadying her. Human thoughts. She closed her eyes, taking a deep breath. They're getting louder. Tyrgan taught me how to shield, but I don't have the energy right now. I can't believe you're a telepath, he mumbled. Does it matter? No. He chewed his lip. But... Have you ever listened to my thoughts? Of course not. I don't want to know anyone's secrets. Plus, it's against the rules. The one time I did it, I got detention. 
that's what you got detention for? I stole the midterm from Lady Galvin's mind. Dex laughed and she couldn't help joining him. It felt wrong given their current situation, but neither of them could seem to stop. They were still laughing as they rounded a corner and Dex plowed into an old man sweeping the sidewalk in front of his store. Watch where you're going, the man shouted as he struggled to regain his balance. We're so sorry, Sophie apologized. He waved his broom at them. You should be more careful. Someone could get hurt. We will. She pulled Dex away from for before the man drew more attention to them. What language were you speaking? Dex asked when they were out of earshot. It sounded like you were trying to clear your throat. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean, wait, what? Sophie, you do realize you were speaking a different language back there, don't you? No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Oh, I was speaking English. Humans don't speak the enlightened language. I know they don't speak the enlightened language, but I know English and I couldn't understand a word you said. She only half heard him because her eyes had spotted part of a tower peeking over the roofs. No way. She took off down a side street. Dex chased after her. The street ended in a wide park and Sophie froze. A hundred yards in front of her was a landmark so recognizable she had to blink her eyes a few times to make sure she was really seeing clearly. What is that thing? Dex asked. The Eiffel Tower. She gaped at the graceful structure she'd seen in hundreds of pictures. We're in Paris. Wait, she turned to Dex. We're in France. And that means you must have heard me speaking French. She wrestled with the idea, but it wouldn't make sense. How could she speak a language she'd never learned? Okay, Dex said, interrupting her thoughts. We know where we are. Now what? I have no idea. I guess we just keep going. They followed a crowd of Indian tourists because their capes looked so less out of place surrounded by saris. We're going to need money, Sophie said as they passed a currency exchange. But unless you feel like robbing a bank, we'll have to figure out a way around it. Doesn't money come out of that machine? Dex asked, pointing to the ATM. That's how they show it in the movies my mom watches. Yeah, but you have to have an account and a code. Can we fake that? No, they have all kinds of security measures. He frowned. Well, I'm going to go check it out. Maybe I can make it work. How could you make it work? I'm good with gadgets. She bit her lip. Fine, but be careful. They have cameras and stuff. He waved her worries away as he got in line. Sophie fidgeted in the background, covering her eyes when he started pressing random buttons like it was a game. She kept waiting for police sirens and alarm bells, but in a couple minutes later, he was at her side. Is a thousand enough? He held out a thick stack of rainbow-colored bills. It's just paper, so I wasn't sure. She gasped, glancing over her shoulder. What did you do? It told it we needed money, and it gave me this. You told it? How? I don't know. I just knew what buttons I needed to press. Why? Because that's not normal, Dex. You just robbed an ATM. I did? Yeah. She shoved the money under her cape so no one could see it. How come you're so good with machines? Is that a special ability or something? He thought for a second before his shoulders fell. It is. I bet I'm a technopath. You say that like it's a bad thing. It's about as good as being a froster, but I guess it's better than nothing. I'll have to look into it when we get home. If we get home. His voice trembled. She squeezed his hand. We'll find a way. I got us into this and I'll get us out. How? He whispered. I don't know. She glared at the spot where her nexus should be. Why wouldn't he give us a nexus? They can track a nexus through the fields that hold you together. They can track a nexus through the field that holds you together. Sophie tried not to worry about how easily they could be found. Okay, then the answer must be in this note. We need to do some research. Research? Yeah. She scanned the street and pulled him toward an internet cafe she spotted a few blocks down. Since neither of them had eaten in days, she bought sandwiches, chicken for her, 
cheese for Dex, who was horrified at the idea of eating a once living creature and bought an hour of internet time. Dex giggled as he stared at the boxy black computers and at the way she navigated the web browser. Technology, he mumbled while Sophie Googled Paris Alexander Lantern. That's it, she gasped. The number one result was Pont Alexander III, a famous bridge across the Seine. Ornate lanterns, Seine River guys, ornate lanterns lined both sides. It had to be their way home. Oh, because lights. Okay, sorry. The shopkeeper gave them directions, and after 15 minutes of walking, the famous golden statues at the top of the columns came into view. They sped up their pace, but their excitement faded when they saw how many lanterns there were. Maybe we should split up, Sophie suggested. What are we looking, what are we even looking for? No idea, just look for anything that looks elven and we'll go from there. Easier said than done, Dex grumbled. He was right, the lanterns were covered in elaborate carvings and decorations, some even with statues. They'd barely covered half the bridge when the sun sank below the horizon. They would need to find somewhere to sleep soon. She was about to call it a day when she spotted a small, curved line at the base of a lantern toward the center of the bridge. An elven rune, one she could actually read. Dex, get over here, she called. She pressed on it, searching for the edges of a secret compartment, but found nothing. Did you find it? I found something. She pointed to the rune. That means Eternalia. This has to be what the note wanted us to find. How does it help us get home? I have no idea. Her eyes examined the lantern inch by inch, finally focusing on the tip of the highest lamp. Look, Dex, there's a crystal. None of the other lanterns has that. You're sure? Yeah, I know these lanterns by heart now, and this is the only one that has it. She squinted, smiling when she saw the crystal only had a single facet. It's a leaping crystal, and I bet it leaps straight to Eternalia. You did it! We can go home! He threw his arms around her and spun her around. A second later, he jumped back, blushing from head to toe. Sorry, I'm just happy. She shrugged, hoping her face wasn't as red as it felt. No problem. Her smile faded. But we still don't have nexuses. How are we supposed to get home? People leap without them all the time. Yeah, people who don't need them anymore. We're close enough, and we'll concentrate extra hard when we do it. We might come back a little faded, but that only lasts a couple, a few days. Easy for him to say, his meter had been three quarters full. She wasn't even to the half. If simple mathematics applied, that would mean she'd lose more than half of herself, which might make her fade away. But it was their only option. Well, we can't do it until sunrise, she pointed to the angle of the crystal, which clearly needed dawn light to create a path. Maybe we should find somewhere to sleep for the night. Dex nodded. I can't believe there's a crystal to Eternalia hidden in the forbidden cities. Do you have any idea how illegal that is? She frowned. I wonder why it's here. So we can come and go as we please, a gruff voice said behind them. Sophie and Dex whipped around to find three figures cloaked in black pointing a silver weapon at their heads. The kidnappers had found them. <laughs>